September 30th, 1965. This was the day that historians believe to have been the start of a mass genocide that killed anywhere between 500,000 to 1 million people in Indonesia. But even to this day, the world has forgotten the history of this barbaric atrocity. How could an event of this scale from only 55 years ago be nowhere to be seen? This is the story of the 1965 Indonesian Genocide. To understand what happened, we first need to go back to 1945. President Sukarno was the leading figure in Indonesia at the time. Early on, he was an Indonesian independence activist against the Dutch and a chief advisor for Imperial Japan during World War II. Soon after the Japanese collapse, he became the president of Indonesia's new republic. Indonesia's new president, Sukarno, was a Marxist, but even more prevailingly, he had a strong philosophy of anti-imperialism. In order to pursue this, he dismantled Indonesia's democracy and its free market and turned to communism. However, especially during this time, the US and Western powers were getting increasingly afraid of the rise of communism across the world. So the US and the West centered foreign policy on a concept called domino theory, where if one country falls to communism, then the other countries would also fall to communism, just like a domino. So fearing another country, especially the size of Indonesia, would turn communist, the U.S. stepped in to undermine Sukarno. In 1958, the CIA backed armed rebels with military assistance to fight for the overthrow of Sukarno's government. The CIA also conducted bombing raids on Indonesian soldiers and civilians. However, after American pilot Alan Pope was captured by Indonesia, the CIA had to call off the operations. On top of this, the CIA also used fake media to smear Sukarno where in one instance they even went as far to stage and film a pornographic film with a man wearing a Sukarno mask. Due to this, American and Indonesian relations gradually got worse. Sukarno soon adopted an anti-American rhetoric where he famously said, quote, To hell with your aid. Sukarno then used the billions of dollars in US aid to buy Soviet weapons. However, Sukarno was not just anti-American, but was fiercely anti-imperialistic. This especially showed when in January of 1965, he withdrew Indonesia from the United Nations due to the increased Soviet relations with its neighboring country of Malaysia. But on top of the increasing tensions between Indonesia and the US, there was another storm brewing inside Indonesia. Indonesia at the time was composed of a four-way power dynamic. It was Sukarno, the right-wing party, the Indonesian army, and then the PKI, also known as the Indonesian Communist Party. There was growing distrust of the Indonesian army after there were claims of the army sending a letter to the British ambassador which suggested a military intervention of Indonesia by the West. On top of this, there were rumors that the top generals would attempt a coup. In order to stop the coup and Western military intervention, the PKI, also known as Indonesia's Communist Party, tried to carry out the capture of the top military generals, but instead ended up killing six leading military generals. In the midst of this chaos, right-winger and pro-Western Suharto came to power by ousting Sukarno. Suharto then fiercely started accusing the communists for a coup because of the six military generals killed. Through this, Suharto used the communists as a scapegoat and then he began the ordering of the killings of alleged communists, who many times were actually just ordinary civilians. With the help of militias from various Islamic groups, the Suharto regime viciously killed the members of the communist movement, critics of Suharto, and many ethnic minorities. The death toll estimated to be around 500,000 to 1 million people killed, most of whom were not even communist. Additionally, thousands were imprisoned without trial, there were numbers of unreported tortures, and the destruction of property was all too common. A CIA report even described the Indonesian genocide as one of the worst mass murders of the 20th century, along with the Soviet purges of the 1930s, the Nazi mass murders during the Second World War, and the Maoist bloodbath of the early 1950s. But even more shocking, according to the National Security Archive, American authorities actively backed the genocide of hundreds of thousands in Indonesia. The US and Western powers had jumped on this as an opportunity to fight communism and supported Suharto's pro-Western government. Records show that the American authorities supplied communications equipment to Suharto which were used to perpetuate false propaganda against the Communist Party. On top of that, the U.S. Embassy even actively shared intelligence and handed lists of suspected communists to the Suharto regime. When Robert J. Martins, a member of the American Embassy, was asked about sharing intelligence to Suharto, he said, quote, It really was a big help to the army. They probably killed a lot of people, and I probably have a lot of blood on my hands, but that's not all bad. 
However, it wasn't just Suharto and the US playing a role in this. The UK and Australia also carried out propaganda to instill hatred toward the Communist Party. The Suharto regime, supported by Western powers, suppressed free speech and would not allow for the criticism of the regime. For the next 40 years, up until 1998, school children were never taught about the genocide and were taught an alternate history of justifying the enjailment of suspected communists. And this decades-long propaganda still has an everlasting effect to this modern day. A 2009 Jakarta Globe survey of Indonesian university students showed that more than 50% were not aware of this genocide. Given these facts, we have to remember and raise awareness to this horrible atrocity. When we look back at this, we cannot just simply look away. We have to hear their stories and never forget what happened just 55 years ago.